Hi, it's Colin Coward. I started the volume to bring you some of the most authentic voices in sports. While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks. So Bill Simmons, who is very good friends with Daryl Morey, so he very well might know, might know something on this front, he reported that the Nets would be interested in the trade for, for Ben Simmons as long as Seth Curry was included, which in, inevitably brought up this question like, is it worth it to send out one of your best offensive players alongside Ben Simmons to get a player like James Harden back? Now, in general, my philosophy with this kind of stuff is just get the star and figure out the rest later. It is much easier after the fact to fill in little holes on the periphery when you have that super duper star power. Now, that can backfire, but it usually backfires when you trade for the wrong star, a la Russell Westbrook. When you give up really good role players and the star you get back is not very good, like the irony in that trade now is Kyle Kuzma might be a better player than Russ. So that backfired because you went after the wrong star. Now, I know James Harden is having one of the worst seasons of his career. I'm aware of that. But he's a very finicky superstar. He's very moody. He's very dependent on things going his way. And he very easily can get thrown off mentally. And that can end up being a problem for him on the court. We've seen it many times throughout his career. Even when he was in Houston, even when things were good. They had a random year in there where he was 41 and 41. And basically didn't play any defense the entire season. He's that kind of guy. Now, is he ever going to be as good as he was in 2018 again? Maybe not. But I know one thing for sure. Even right now, even with as poorly as he's playing, if he's reinvigorated in Houston, or excuse me, if he's reinvigorated in Philly, I know for a fact that he is still one of the top 10 players in the NBA. That's how much of an offensive weapon he is. And yes, Seth Curry is a hugely important offensive player for the, for the Sixers right now. They have a ton of dribble handoff stuff that they run with Joel Embiid. That's one of the pillars of their offense. However, James Harden, even in his lessened state, is a significantly better offensive engine than what you got with Seth Curry. Now, do you have to figure things out again? Are you going to have to change your system? Sure. Are you going to have to rebuild chemistry? Sure. But you're undoubtedly a better offensive team with a higher ceiling bringing in James Harden, even if you have to send out Seth Curry. And the most important detail here is that when you have the super duper stars, the reason why I believe in trading out role players for superstars is because superstars fill so many responsibilities on the floor. You know, like if you had to assign like a pie chart or a pie graph or whatever you want to call it, that lays out the responsibilities that have to be filled on a basketball court, when the two superstars fill almost the entire chart with what they do, all of a sudden those little pieces that you have to fill in become way more manageable. You, you're not going to be able to find a guy as good as Seth Curry as a role player next to James Harden and Joel Embiid. But you can probably find somebody who's 70 to 80% as good, which without James Harden is a huge difference because you need Seth Curry to do everything he's been doing. But when James Harden's in there and all those responsibilities are filled, the job becomes easy. This is why the Lakers won the title in 2020 and all their role players looked good. All those guys that got slandered in the summer coming into the season did great. Why? Because LeBron and Anthony Davis both played like MVPs that year. And so what they expected and needed from the role players on the periphery was such a small and manageable goal that they all knocked it out of the park. Every single player panned out that season. Even Rondo, who struggled that whole season, was awesome in the playoffs, at least for stretches. So that's the kind of vibe you got to look at, it, the way you got to look at this if you're a Philly. Like, yeah, we're losing Seth Curry. Yeah, we're losing Ben Simmons, but he wasn't playing anyway. But you're bringing in James Harden. And by having James Harden and Joel Embiid fill up so much of that pie chart, you get, open the door for yourself to make easy roles available. And with those easy roles, you can slot in lesser players and they can knock those roles out of the park. So no matter what Philly asks, even if they ask for Tyrese Maxey instead of Seth Curry, in, in terms of what Brooklyn's asking for, I mean. Even if they ask for that, even if they ask for both, I don't care what they ask for. You just get the star. Because this is not Russell Westbrook. 
This is not a player that's going to come in and massively underperform. He's going to be reinvigorated. He's going to be the go-to perimeter scorer. He's going to be playing alongside one of the best players in the league. He is going to love it there. He's going to be completely bought in, and he's going to look great. I feel very confident in that. So you've got to do what it takes to get him. Now the question becomes, do you throw everything at him now, or do you wait till the summer? And the reason why you go for it now is because nothing is guaranteed. The Lakers won the title in 2020. That's great. But look at how the two seasons since then have gone. It very easily could have gone the other way. 2020 could have been injuries, and maybe this is the year they're healthy. But you need shots at it. You need pulls at the slot machine. Because it is like, it's like a slot machine winning the title. That's how hard it is to win. And you buy yourself an extra pull on the slot machine when you make the deal now, instead of waiting to the summer. If you wait to the summer, there's no guarantee next year is going to be the year it all pans out anyway, and you double your chances if you do it now. So I hope, I hope Philly puts all the chips on the table and gets James Harden because I think it'll be the best for them. And we talk, As we talked about on Saturday, I love the Ben Simmons fit in Brooklyn, filling in a lot of responsibilities that have never been filled in on that team.